Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 12 Beta 5 to developers. This came in at 507 megabytes for me, and as per your request, I've installed it on my iPhone 7 Plus SE, and I've already had it on my iPad Pro 12.9 inch. So let's take a look at the build number. You'll see the build is 16A5339E. And this particular build does not bring a ton of new things, but there are some changes. But one of the things they've changed or at least improved upon is the speed of everything. Now, towards the end of beta four, up to today already, I've had to reboot this phone pretty much every day, sometimes twice a day in the past week. Now I did a follow up on beta four and it was better then, but then as it progressed, it was just worse and worse. And I would find I'd open an app like this scroll and nothing would happen. And then it would completely freeze. I'd have to try and close apps. Nothing would work. I'd reboot and it was fine for the next day. So that's one thing I've found that it seems to be much smoother already. Apps are nice and quick. Things in general seem to be faster. So that's a good sign. And of course, we're not close to the final yet. We'll see that in September, but let's take a closer look. And I have the Geekbench scores and things we'll take a look at at the end. Now, one of the new things or changes that they've fixed is people that had dull home screens. This is actually more vibrant now. So if you were having that issue and experiencing that, the screen is more vibrant. One of the things they've changed also, which is very subtle, is on the home screen. If you try and unlock it and you get to your passcode here, We'll wait for it for just a moment. These button presses are much more subtle. So you actually have to hold your finger down on it for it to show. If you don't do that, it doesn't work. So you won't see anything light up. The next thing they've done is resolved nine issues and 13 issues still remain as far as known issues are concerned. So aside from all the bug fixes, there's still some issues like we'd expect. Now, also a subtle change that they've made is haptic feedback. If you do this, you barely feel it anymore. So if you go into the, the multitasker, the haptic feedback is greatly reduced. Just something I thought I'd mention. Now, one thing a lot of you have been waiting for is the beta for battery or battery health to be over and it is over. So you'll see I'm at 100% and it's no longer a beta. So now it's probably pretty accurate. And I did notice my screen on time went up and hopefully it's more accurate as far as understanding the battery overall, because my battery life has been pretty bad on beta four. I'll report on beta five after a few days and see how it goes. Now, the next thing is screen time no longer shows your family members if they're not children. So if you go into screen time here and you have family members there, as long as they're 18 or older, they won't show as children. If they're under that, they will show. Now, one of the things I noticed that was new is when I went into the photos app for the first time, I was greeted with a what's new in photos message. So this is a new little splash screen that pops up when you open photos for the first time. And also in the photos app itself in albums, they've made a change. Let me show you here down at the bottom where we have media types under albums, they've put little icons here. So these icons weren't there before, and it's just something they've added and it looks a little bit nicer than it did before. Another new change is in music. So if we go into music and then we go to search, we have a new search by lyrics little dialogue to let us know what we can do. So we can search by lyrics. We knew that, but it's just telling us. And then we hit OK and it lets us search whatever we'd like. Also, one thing I noticed is in playlists, you can sort them now by recently played. So some of these were here before, but they added recently played as well. Now, another thing I've found is split screen. If you're using it on an iPad was pretty awful in the iOS 12 betas, and now it seems to be working like it should. So if you want to open a web browser, for example, and then bring in say the app store, it works like it did before and it's working really well before I couldn't get this to work a lot of the time. I don't know if anyone else had issues, but I found that it's much easier and working well on the iPad or my iPad pro. Now there's also a new animation that was found that was within the code showing the new AirPods wireless charge case. So hopefully we'll see that soon with air power because they haven't released that yet. It's kind of getting ridiculous. So hopefully we'll see that released really soon, or at least by September when iOS 12 should come out. Now, aside from all of the things I've mentioned, there are some known issues you should be aware of, such as when you restart your phone, Bluetooth may not work with your paired accessories. So you want to make sure that whatever it is you're using is not critical before installing this update because your Bluetooth accessory may or may not work. It's a known issue. It will be resolved later on. Also using Apple pay cash 
to send or receive money using Siri may not work or result in an error. And a lot of those Siri CarPlay commands when you're in your vehicle connected to CarPlay may not work. However, they have fixed quite a few of those. There's a few other things such as ride sharing causing problems when using Siri. And then also Wi-Fi calling may end unexpectedly if you're on T-Mobile. So if you're in your home on Wi-Fi with Wi-Fi calling, you may want to turn Wi-Fi off before placing an important call. So let's take a look at the Geekbench scores. You'll see here it did pretty well. I've got 10,574 for multi-core and 4,241 for single core. If we go to the history, you'll see it's a little bit of an improvement over before. So that may explain some of the smoothness, although those aren't such significant jumps that you would expect any major differences. So that's pretty much it for this one. I'll link this wallpaper in the description below. Thanks again to Hafed Marzouk for sending this one along. And if you found anything else, let us know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.